This video is about the relationship between the graph of a function and its first derivative or second derivative. This chart shows the relationships between function f, f prime, and f double prime. Make sure you have this information memorized. You should be able to quickly draw this chart in the margin of your next test or quiz before you begin. Problem number one f prime at negative 2 is positive, negative, 0, or undefined. Well, here is the x value of negative 2. f prime means the slope at negative 2. So you can see that the slope at negative 2 is positive. Another way to look at it is that if function f is increasing, then f prime will be positive. And you can see that at negative 2, function f is increasing, therefore f prime is positive. Problem number 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is. Well, here is the x value of 2. When we talk about the limit as x approaches 2, we are talking about the y value that we are approaching as we get closer and closer to an x value of 2. And we can see that we are getting closer and closer to a y value of positive 2. So this limit is positive. Number 3, f at 3 is. Well, here is the x value of 3 right here. The value of the function at 3 is 0. It's right on the x-axis. So f at 3 is 0. Number 4. When you see a strange expression like this one, you should interpret this as the derivative. This is the slope of the function at an x value of 1. In other words, this whole strange looking expression is the same as f prime at 1. So let's see, here is an x value of 1. Looking for the slope, we see that there is a horizontal tangent line right here. So the slope at 1 is 0. Problem number 5 says, on the axes above, sketch a graph of f prime. So we are given the graph of function f, and we need to sketch f prime. The first step is always to divide the function into intervals of increasing and decreasing. See how function f is rising from left to right in this first interval? So function f is increasing on this interval, and it is decreasing on this interval. And then it's increasing again from here to here. And it is decreasing the rest of the way. But looking at our chart, whenever function f is increasing, f prime will be positive. Anywhere f is decreasing, f prime will be negative. So f prime will be positive in the yellow intervals and negative in these blue intervals. In addition, let's pay attention to where function f has a horizontal tangent line. You can see there will be a horizontal tangent line here and here. That means that the slope is 0 at these two x values. So uh, the slope is the value of f prime. So f prime is going to pass through this point and this point. f prime will be 0 here and here. I am ready to start drawing the graph of f prime, but before I do, notice that we have a sharp corner right here, a cusp. Whenever there's a cusp in the graph, if you take the derivative, you should be expecting some type of a discontinuity, probably a jump discontinuity. So f prime should be positive in the first interval. So I'm going to start off above the x-axis. I know it has to pass through this point. 
So now we are negative, we're below the x-axis. I'm gonna to have to bend back around to make it to this point. And as I pass through, now I am positive, I'm above the x-axis. I'll just keep going for a bit. And I'll stop right here. Before I do the rest, notice that function f is linear in the remaining interval. So instead of just saying that it's negative, we can be more specific. Let's go ahead and calculate what the slope is. And uh, so we can be very specific when we graph f prime. So I can see that it's going uh, down two over one. So that's a slope of negative two. So let me just write that down. So in this interval, we specifically have a slope of negative two, a constant slope of negative two. That means that f prime should be drawn as a horizontal line at negative two. And that's it. This is a possible graph of the function f prime. And we should put open circles at the ends of these lines to show that f prime is undefined right at two. For problem number six, they have another one for us. Here's the graph of the function f, and we are to sketch a graph of f prime. So the first step will be to divide function f into intervals of increasing and decreasing. We can see that function f is decreasing in the blue intervals and increasing in the yellow intervals. Remember that wherever function f is increasing, f prime will be positive. If f is decreasing, f prime will be negative. We should also take note of any locations where there is a horizontal tangent line. The most obvious ones are here and here, but also you see this point of inflection happening right here. This also counts as a horizontal tangent line. So at these three x values, the slope is zero. So when we graph f prime, it should have a value of zero here, here, and here. As I draw the graph of f prime, I see that it has to be negative throughout this entire first interval. So I have to stay below the x-axis, yet I have to intersect with this point at negative four. So how am I going to hit this point and yet stay negative the entire time? Well, it must be a point of tangency. So I'm going to go up to that point and I'm going to hit it, but then I'm gonna go back down. And then I have to come back and intersect with this point and then it's going to bend back down. So notice I stayed negative the entire time on the first interval. And then in the second interval here, I am above the x-axis. So it's positive as we expected. In the next interval, it goes negative. So it's going to be like this. Now we see a sharp turn right here, a cusp. So we are expecting there to be a discontinuity here. In fact, I should put an open circle at the end to show that the derivative is going to be undefined right now. Because the remaining interval has a constant slope of positive two, we should draw f prime as a horizontal line at two beginning with an open circle to show that the derivative is undefined at this sharp turn. And that's it. This is a possible sketch for f prime. For number seven, we are going in the opposite direction. We are given the graph of g prime, the derivative, and we need to graph the original function. So we're gonna start off by dividing function g prime into intervals of increasing and decreasing. So far, that's the same as what we did on the previous problem. 
But now this is function g prime. What's the relationship between g prime and the original function g? Remember that if g prime is increasing, then g will be concave up. If g prime is decreasing, g will be concave down. So function g will be concave down in the blue intervals and concave up in the yellow intervals. Next, we need to divide g prime into intervals of positive and negative. We can see that g prime is positive in the yellow intervals and negative in the blue intervals, meaning that g prime is above the x-axis in the yellow areas and below the x-axis in the blue areas. But what does this mean for the original function g? Remember that anywhere g prime is positive, function g will be increasing. Anywhere g prime is negative, function g will be decreasing. By the way, notice that when we were given function f and we had to graph f prime on the previous problem, we only needed the bottom part of the chart. We didn't pay any attention to this part. But on this problem, where we are given g prime and we are being asked to work backwards and graph function g, we need the entire chart of information. One more thing, we are looking at the graph of g prime. Remember that g prime represents the slope of function g at every point. So we can easily tell where the slope will be zero. So the slope will be zero here and here and here and here. That means there will be a horizontal tangent line at each of these x values. Let's begin to graph the original function g one interval at a time. I will start a new interval every time something changes, whether it's increasing to decreasing or concave up to concave down. So in this first interval, function g should be increasing and concave down, and it should end with a horizontal tangent line. So here we go, increasing, concave down, and it ends at a horizontal tangent line. For this next interval, function g should be decreasing and concave down. So here we go, decreasing and concave down. For the next interval, function g should be decreasing and concave up. And also, it should end at a horizontal tangent line. So here we go decreasing, concave up, and ending at a horizontal tangent line. For this next interval, g should be concave up and increasing. So here we go, concave up, increasing. In this interval, g should be increasing, concave down, and it should end at a horizontal tangent line. So here we go, increasing, concave down, and ending at a horizontal tangent line. On the next interval, g should be decreasing and concave down. So here we go, decreasing, concave down. For this interval, function g should be decreasing and concave up and also it should end at a horizontal tangent line. So here we go, decreasing, concave up, and ending at a horizontal tangent line. In this last interval, g is increasing and concave up. So here we go, increasing, concave up. So that's it, this is a possible sketch of the graph of function G.